70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. Life on Earth is dependent on healthy oceans, but our entire marine ecosystem is under severe stress. Every second breath that we take comes from the ocean. If one thing goes, then there's going to be a tipping point in a really bad way. Each year, it is estimated that between five to eight million tons of plastic makes it into our oceans. When it comes to the environmental cost to plastic, the most obvious one is the entanglement issue. The biggest environmental concern and the reason why everybody's got very het up about plastic is because of plastic getting into food webs, so animals eating plastic. The ocean systems are so complex, completely interwoven and reliant on one another. And if one thing goes, then there's going to be a tipping point in a really bad way. And the thing is that the oceans don't need humans, but boy, we need the oceans. Every second breath that we take comes from the ocean. If life in the oceans cease, so will we. I've been on and around the ocean since childhood. After running a successful commercial diving company for the past 20 years, I felt a need to give back. With the global focus on plastic pollution and my eldest son Tristan studying marine biology, I wanted to get involved and see for myself the true extent of the pollution in our region, the Western Indian Ocean. In 2015, I started developing the idea of going on an epic ocean adventure but I felt it had to have a purpose. I decided that we should go on a voyage off the beaten track, a journey that focuses on the impact of plastics in our oceans. The ocean played a huge part in my growing up years. I spent hours in or on the water, so choosing my field of study in marine biology was easy. It's not only the science, but also the energy of the ocean that gets me. When my dad spoke to me about this trip he had in mind, I got the idea of researching the effects of microplastics on seagrass and actually decided to do it as a dissertation. Seagrass is considered an ecosystem engineer. It provides habitat, nurseries and food to a wide range of species. If seagrass sediment is trapping microplastics, the impact on our oceans could be far worse than we previously thought. I live for the ocean. Give me good waves and a surfboard, and I'm stoked. I've sailed thousands of miles around the world over many years, and I just have this deep love for the sea. Gert and me have been buddies for a long time, and when he said he needed a skipper for the trip, it was a no-brainer. I was him. Low pressure. After running the South African coastline, we'll be heading towards Madagascar. Then we'll hug the coast going north. From there on to the Seychelles. From there we will make our way to the Maldives. And then to Chagos. A few hundred miles south of the Maldives. It's every yachty's dream to go there. Way, way off the beaten track. Due to time constraints and varying sea conditions, for our journey, Mark and I decided that we needed a motor yacht. After many months of searching, we found a Shane. Absolutely perfect for our expedition. She is strong, sleek, and extremely light on fuel. We sailed her to Cape Town and rebuilt the interior to make her more suited as our expedition vessel. Get for the box,
the biggest environmental concern and the reason why everybody's got very het up about plastics is because of plastic getting into food webs, so ingestion, animals eating plastic. There's a couple of reasons why animals eat plastic. Sometimes they just do it accidentally. So if you're a baleen whale swimming along in the ocean and your strategy is to just engulf whole schools of fish, you're going to swallow the odd plastic bag as well. But there's a whole bunch of organisms that actively eat plastic. Selectively, you can see that they're picking certain types of plastic. They just haven't learned to discriminate between what's edible and what's not. If it's a sharp piece of plastic, it can cut you up inside. Um, if it's a big piece of plastic, it can potentially just block your whole digestive tract. The really big concern for everybody and why people are worried about it is because plastics potentially introduce toxic compounds into the food web. And we as marine consumers are sitting at the top of that food web, so maybe we're also getting exposed to those toxins. Let's go, let's go, Indian Ocean, here we come. Madagascar is a huge island. 250 nautical miles from the east coast of Africa, it's actually the fourth largest island in the world, with a population of 25 million people. Run for the plastic. We're going to up anchor and head south to our next destination, Fasi. As we arrive in Bafasi, we notice that they have a very different take on single-use plastic. That's plastic. Every single one of these is an old piece of a, of a flip-flop, what we call, call slops. It just shows you how what would be lying on the beach as waste and pollution is actually found a second life and has become very useful to these guys as flotation and keeps the beaches clean. Seychelles is an archipelago consisting of some 115 islands which are all fairly spread out. Mahi is the main island and the capital city of Victoria is our first stop. The Seychelles is interesting because the government has already banned plastic bags and we've heard that there are plans to restrict other single-use items as well. We were very fortunate uh, Sheena managed to organize for us a meeting with Waste Management, which falls under the Ministry of uh, Environmental and Climate Change. Waste management, solid waste management, is, is one of our biggest challenge. We are constrained by, by space. Being a small island developing state, uh, heavily reliant on, on tourism, obviously the cleanliness of the environment is key to us. The whole issue of, of plastics in general is increasingly becoming uh, a greater concern. We don't have much options in terms of continuing with, with landfilling. One approach which we're looking at and the rest of the world is looking at also is uh, waste to energy. So that's the future for us. Waste to energy sounds like a great solution as this could give some value to the waste already in landfills and drastically improve waste management moving forward. Education, legislation and waste becoming a resource are the main takeaways from our time in the Seychelles. The Maldives is an archipelago made up of 27 atolls. An atoll being a ring or chain of islands formed of coral reef. The city of Male is jam-packed 
With only 2.2 square kilometers of land space, it was built to cater for 60,000 people. But today, it has a staggering population of 158,000. Waste is collected in the city and then offloaded onto a barge and taken to a nearby island called Tilifushi. Infamously known as Burning Island, it was founded on reclaimed land. But the scary thing is that this reclaimed land has been built using unseparated waste. On our arrival coming here, I thought it was bad. Now being inside here, close to the island itself, uh, it, it, the mind just boggles as to the volume of plastic that's being put into this region of the Maldives. When we built um, Tilafushi Island, we didn't follow any um, environment-friendly uh, methods. But now um, we are uh, planning and we have been working to make it better. Whether you're Maldivian or a tourist, every simple choice for what may seem to be an insignificant action, it has an impact. It's up to all of us. Okay, boys, we're on our way. We're out of here. Chagos is an archipelago made up of seven atolls about 300 miles south of Adu. Here we are in literally the last frontier. The whole of this archipelago is, is protected and we're still coming across it. Chagos is uninhabited, so by the time a lot of the plastic washes up here, it's really broken down and degraded. And not only does it make it harder for us to pick it up, but a lot of it ends up in the water and in the sediments and being ingested by the animals all around here. So it doesn't take long before this sort of stuff turns into microplastic. So it's, yeah, it's really not the best thing to see. What we have discovered is the hard-hitting truth that plastic pollution has no boundaries. What doesn't sink to the ocean floor floats and travels with the winds and the currents. If it ends up on the shore of some distant, uninhabited island, there is no one there to pick it up. For me, the next mission is to clean up these beautiful islands. On our journey, we have met some incredible people that have given us hope. If you really put your mind into something, it will change. And the healing power of nature is something what we humans are completely underestimating.
by making better choices every day. Together, we become part of the solution.